Greetings, my name is Dr. Magoha and I'll be taking you through postoperative management of central diabetes insipidus. Diabetes insipidus is defined as the passage of large volumes of dilute urine. This is qualified as more than 3 liters over 24 hours or less than 300 milliosmoles per kg. It has the following two major forms. Number one is central. This is caused by the pituitary or neurohypothesis. It's also known as neurogenic. It's characterized by decreased secretion of antidiuretic hormone. ADH is also referred to as arginine vasopressin or AVP. Number two is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Characterized by decreased ability to concentrate urine because of resistance to ADH action in the kidney. Other known causes are primary polydipsia, also known as dipsogenic diabetes insipidus, and gestational diabetes insipidus. Both are caused by deficiencies in arginine vasopressin, but the deficiencies do not result from a defect in the neurohypothesis or the kidneys as stated prior. After surgery to the region of the pituitary and the hypothalamus, the most common form is central diabetes insipidus. This may exhibit one of the following three patterns. Number one is triphasic, which is observed clinically. Number two is transient. And number three is permanent. Now, what do we do immediately after surgery? We keep in the Foley catheter for 48 hours to accurately monitor urine output as it's a strong indicator of diabetes insipidus. Then we check every four hours sodium and specific gravity for the first 24 hours. We should be careful not to be fooled by post-op fluid embolization. We should only suspect diabetes insipidus if urine output is more than 250 ml per hour for three consecutive hours. If the serum sodium is more than 148 and if the urine specific gravity is less than 1.003. How do we treat? So, there is a triphasic pattern to DI over the first 5 to 10 days post-op. If the patient is awake, we should have them drink as much free water as they are able to. If they are unable to tolerate orally due to nausea, vomiting, or altered me mental status, we can treat them with half normal saline with 20 mL equivalents of potassium chloride. We also give desmopressin if the sodium is more than 150. How do we dose arginine vasopressin or desmopressin? So we can give it intravenously or subcutaneously at one to four micrograms twice a day, or we can give it orally at 0.05 milligrams twice a day, up to 0.6 milligrams twice a day. The most comfortable to give is nasal insufflation, given at 10 micrograms, which is one puff, and we can give up to 40 micrograms per day. Desmopressin therapy should be continued for as long as the patient is symptomatic for central diabetes insipidus. The goal of therapy is to control nocturia and partial control of porouria during the day, since more aggressive therapy can promote development of hyponatremia. Thank you for your attention and have a blessed day.